the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Australia. Three amazing countries, three different accents. Welcome back to the Travel Bible. In this video, we'll be comparing the land of the free, the land of the tea, and the land of the Aussie. We will take a look at their demographics, geography, economy, and quality of life. And then once you've watched the video, we will ask you which one you'd visit, which one you'd live in, and which one you'd avoid. So sit back, grab a cuppa, relax, and we hope you learn something new. So let's begin with their demographics by looking at the population of these three nations. Starting with the lowest, we have Australia, with roughly 25.5 million, putting them just below North Korea and just above Niger. However, for a mind-boggling fact, Niger's population is growing at an extreme rate. By the year 2050, it is predicted that Niger will have a population of roughly 65 million, compared to Australia, who will have roughly 33 million. And next we have the UK with a population of just under 68 million, putting them behind Thailand and just above France. And finally, the third most populated country on Earth, the US, with roughly 330 million people. However, what's more impressive is that India, who is the next most populated country, has over 1 billion more people than the US. Okay, great, let's now take a look at the population densities of these three countries. This is where it gets interesting. With 271 people per kilometre squared, the UK is the most densely populated out of the three, to no surprise. Next, we have the US with roughly 34 people per kilometre squared, which is crazy considering how densely populated cities like LA and New York City are. And then finally, a remarkable three people per kilometre squared, we have Australia. The state of West Australia is even more remarkable, at just 0.89 people per kilometre squared. All right, and finally, let's take a look at the life expectancy and average age of population for these three countries. So as expected, this one is super close. Australia takes the win for life expectancy with 82.4 years, followed by the UK with 80.9, and then just behind we have the US with 80.1. And then for the average age, the US actually takes the win here with 38.2, followed by Australia with 38.8, and then the oldest out of the three, the UK with 40.5. Cool, let's now take a look at the geography of these three magnificent countries, starting off by looking at the percentage of their landmass that's covered by forest. So to my surprise, the UK actually has the least at roughly 12%, followed by Australia with 16.2%, and then finally the US with 33% of their land covered by forest. Forests are beneficial to countries because they take carbon and carbon dioxide out of the air, make the air cleaner, and provide perfect habitats for incredible animals. Next, we'll take a look at their total landmass, excluding inland and sea waters. So to no surprise, the UK is by far the smallest out of the three, with a minuscule 242,000 squared kilometers. And then we have Australia at just under 7.7 .7 million squared kilometers. And then finally, the largest out of the three and the third largest in the world, the US with roughly 9.2 million kilometers squared. Australia's largest state, Western Australia, accounts for around 2.5 million kilometers squared with an absolutely insane 0.89 people per kilometer squared. Western Australia alone is 12 times the size of the UK and roughly four times the size of Texas, to put it in perspective. Let's now compare them on a map using the truesize.com. So believe it or not, when you look at a map, the size of most countries are completely incorrect and out of proportion. It's difficult to represent our three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional space. So this website allows us to see the true size of every country. So as you can see here, Australia and the US are in fact quite similar in terms of size, but they completely and utterly dwarf the UK. Okay, moving on to the economies of these three countries. Starting off with their total GDP, the gross domestic product. The gross domestic product reflects the value and productivity of an economy. It measures the market value of all the final goods and services produced annually. With an economy of roughly $1.3 trillion, Australia is the lowest out of the three. Then we have the UK with the fifth largest economy in the world with a GDP of around 3 trillion. And then finally, the big one, the world's largest economy, 
the US with a phenomenal 20 to 21 trillion dollars. To put this in perspective, the second highest in the world is China with roughly 15 trillion, and then Japan, and then Germany with 5 trillion and 3.8 trillion respectively. And now that we've seen their GDP, let's take a look at the GDP per capita. So we get this by dividing the total GDP by the total population. So the US takes a clear win here with $62,600. The UK is actually the lowest with $45,500 and then sitting nicely in between is Australia with $52,200. And to end the video, let's now take a look at some quality of life statistics. Starting off with the obesity rates for these three nations. This is the percentage of adults in the country that are classed as obese. So unfortunately, it's not a great result for these three countries. The UK has the lowest at roughly 28% followed by Australia with 29% and then the US with around 36%. It's quite obvious that the modern Western standard diet is extremely poor or perhaps the education of health is poor or maybe it's the constant bombardment of adverts for cheap fast food which is widely available. Out of the three, only the UK has a public healthcare system. Australia has by far the most hospital beds and physicians per 1,000 people. Perhaps this has something to do with their tight immigration rules. They only allow skilled workers who are needed into their country. So now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments section below which one you'd live in, which one you'd visit, and which one you'd avoid, and why. We can't wait to read your comments. And while you're there, let us know which city or countries we should do next. Personally, I would live in Australia for the amazing quality of life and weather. I'd visit the USA because they have so many fantastic states and cities with a variety of climates. And then I'd avoid the UK because I've lived here all my life. So if you did enjoy the video or you learned something new, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.